Hey everyone, happy Thursday. Thanks for tuning in this week. I'm Waller's Wallet and a couple months ago I was asked if I would compare the Chase Trifecta against the American Express Trifecta. So today we're going to have ourselves a little credit card battle to see which set of credit cards comes out on top. Now there are a few variations of the Chase Trifecta, but the Trifecta we're going to be using today includes the Chase Sapphire Reserve, the Chase Freedom, and the Chase Freedom Unlimited. Also for the American Express Trifecta, we're going to be using the American Express Platinum, the American Express Everyday Preferred, and the American Express Blue Business Plus. So let's start off with the sign up bonuses. Now we're going to look at the public offers on these cards, and remember you can find better American Express offers by going through a private browser. Now all of these bonus spending requirements are in the first 90 days of opening your credit card. Looking at the Chase credit cards first, the Chase Sapphire Reserve has a 50,000 point bonus when you spend $4,000, the Chase Freedom has a 15,000 point bonus when you spend $500, and the Chase Freedom Unlimited has a 15,000 point bonus when you spend $500. Both the Freedom and the Freedom Unlimited do offer 2,500 point bonuses when you do add authorized users to your accounts. Now taking a look at the American Express cards, the Platinum card comes with a 60,000 point bonus after you spend $5,000, the Everyday Preferred has a 15,000 point bonus when you spend $1,000, and the Blue Business Plus currently is offering a 10,000 point bonus when you spend $3,000. And this round goes to Chase, and this means you're going to earn 85,000 bonus points for a $5,000 total spend when you add authorized users. Compared to American Express, where you'll earn 85,000 bonus points for a $9,000 spend. Now let's take a look at the bonus restrictions. Now I'm pretty confident most people know about Chase's 524 rule, but if you don't, Chase's 524 rule is if you've opened five or more credit cards from any bank in the last 24 months, Chase is going to deny you for one of their ultimate reward earning credit cards. They will count cards against you where you are an authorized user, but they will not count business credit cards towards your 524 total. But if you are over 524, you will not be able to get one of the Chase's Ultimate Reward business credit cards. Now American Express has a once in a lifetime rule where you can only get the bonus once. Now this isn't always true since they do send out offers without this language, meaning you're able to get this bonus again. Recently, American Express just added more language saying they have the right to deny you a bonus based on the number of credit cards you've opened or closed, including other factors. While it might seem American Express is actually tougher, I'm actually going to give American Express the point here. American Express will still approve you for credit cards if you've had it before or if you're churning credit cards. You just might not be eligible for that bonus. But at least you're going to be able to open the credit card for the benefits if you really wanted to. Chase would just flat out deny you if you're over 524. Now let's take a look at those annual fees. The only card in the Chase lineup that has an annual fee is the Chase Sapphire Reserve and that comes with a $450 annual fee and it's not waived. The other two cards of the trifecta are fee free. Taking a look at the American Express side, the Platinum card comes with a $550 annual fee, the Everyday Preferred has a $95 annual fee, and the Blue Business Plus comes with no annual fee. Again, I'm going to have to give this round to Chase because the Chase Trifecta has a total of $450 annual fees while the American Express Trifecta has $645 in annual fees. Now let's take a look at the earning rates of our Trifectas. And for this round, we're going to start with American Express. The American Express Platinum earns 5 points per dollar on all airfare when you book directly with the airline or through the AMX travel portal. You're also going to earn 5 points per dollar in hotels when you book through the AMX travel portal. The Everyday Preferred earns 3 points per dollar on groceries up to $6,000 per year, 2 points per dollar on gas, and 1 point per dollar everywhere else. And once you hit 30 transactions in a month, those categories turn into 4.5 points per dollar on groceries, 3 points per dollar on gas, and 1.5 points per dollar everywhere else. The Blue Business Plus though earns 2 points per dollar on all purchases up to $50,000 a year. Looking at the Chase Trifecta, the Sapphire Reserve earns 3 points per dollar on all travel and dining. The Freedom earns 5 points per dollar on rotating categories, and the Freedom Unlimited earns 1.5 points per dollar on all purchases. And I think the key piece to this round really lies with the American Express Everyday Preferred. The 30 transaction multiplier is great, but you're going to be using your Blue Business Plus for your non-bonus spend. So it'll take a lot of transactions on gas and groceries to hit that 30 transaction mark, which I really think is a stretch for most people unless you're using this to make low value transactions to hit your 30 transaction requirement. And if you can't hit that 30 transaction mark, you're basically paying $95 for a card that earns one point per dollar more at the grocery store. 
For this round, I'm actually going to call it a split. American Express definitely has the better card for non-bonus spend, but it really hinges on if someone is able to make the 30 transaction requirement for the everyday preferred. If so, the American Express rotation will win out over the Chase rotation. If you can't hit that 30 transaction mark, I'm going to give it to Chase. Let's take a look at combining our points, and this is definitely worth looking at since both of these programs are different. Chase has separate point accounts for each credit card you have, and ultimately you'd want to move your points to your Chase Sapphire Reserve to take advantage of the transfer partners and other travel benefits. You can combine your points with an authorized user or someone living at the same address as you. Now American Express actually puts all of your points into one account, so there's no need to worry about moving points from one account to the next to achieve max value. You won't be able to pool your points with another person though, but if someone is an authorized user on your account, you can actually move your points to their frequent flyer program. Now I'm going to give this round a chase. Being able to combine your points with an authorized user or someone living at the same address is a great way to pool your points for redemptions. Now there is a rumor Chase may be making changes to this benefit in the future, but this is a more generous policy than American Express. If Chase were to restrict moving points from across accounts, then this is going to change and then I would give the benefit to American Express. Now let's talk about redeeming our points. Both trifectas have options other than travel options, but we're looking at ways to making our travel cheaper, so we're really only going to be looking at travel redemptions. The primary card in the Chase rotation is the Chase Sapphire Reserve, and these points can be redeemed through the Chase Travel Portal at 1.5 cents per point, and since you can move your points from other cards in the rotation, you're really going to be redeeming for a minimum value of 2.25% to the Chase Travel Portal. Your 5x categories would yield you a 7.5% return. And Chase has some great transfer partners as well. The transferring of Chase points is pretty much instant across all of their partners. Some might take a few hours, but really that isn't terrible. Taking a look at American Express, you can redeem your membership reward points for 1 cent per point on airfare or 0.7 cents per point on hotels. And I really think this needs to be reevaluated by American Express because these values are just not competitive enough with their competition. American Express does have a lot of valuable transfer partners, and I am not a fan of American Express pushing the excise tax to their customers to transfer to domestic airlines. Some partners do take a couple of days for your points to post, which is not great, especially if you found a word space that you needed sooner than later. It does take a little bit more work to get the most value from these points when compared to ultimate reward points. I made this decision when I compared the Sapphire Reserve to the Platinum card, and even though American Express has more transfer partners, the Chase Sapphire Reserve's ability to book through their travel portal at 1.5 cents per point, and their transfer partners gives them the win here in this category. Let's take a look at the other benefits of these cards. The Chase Sapphire Reserve comes with primary auto coverage, great travel protection benefits, lounge access, TSA pre-checked or global entry credit, the reserve also comes with a $300 travel credit, which you receive once per card member year, and the fee-free cards really don't have any benefits worth mentioning. Chase does have their own shopping portal though, which helps you earn even more ultimate reward points when you shop online. The benefits from American Express, the Platinum card gives you more options when it comes to lounge access, and you're also going to receive hotel status from your Platinum card. The Platinum card also comes with TSA pre-check or a global entry credit, you're going to receive $200 in airline credits. You also receive Uber credits and a Saks Fifth Ave credit. You're going to be able to redeem your airline credit twice before paying your second annual fee. And these are just some of the larger benefits from American Express. While American Express may have just recently devalued their American Express offers, all three of these credit cards come with access to them. And this is a great way to earn extra points or save even more money. American Express wins this round since you're going to receive more credits as well as receive status benefits. Although Chase does have better travel protection and you have access to the Ultimate Reward shopping portal. So which trifecta wins? For me, I think the Chase trifecta comes out on top. The fact the annual fees are lower, it comes with great earning rates, solid transfer partners, and more value when redeeming through the Chase travel portal. Plus you can earn even more points when you shop online through the Chase shopping portal. American Express definitely has the better benefits and probably one of the best non-bonus spending cards on the market with the Blue Business Plus. I think the big downfall of American Express Membership Reward Program is the underwhelming value outside of their transfer partners, the higher annual fee for their trifecta, as well as lack of point pooling. So tell me, which credit card combination do you think is the best? Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in this week. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up, or if you know someone who might benefit from this video, feel free to share it with them. Remember, I post new videos every Thursday, so if you like learning about credit cards, points, 
miles, cash back, or just flat out traveling for less, consider hitting that subscribe button down below, and I'll see you all next week. Safe travels and take care.